Attorney General William Barr is refusing to appear before a House committee today. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you what Democrats are doing to try to get him there. And a man was killed while walking along the interstate near the airport interchange near Belgrade yesterday. Coming up, what the Montana Highway Patrol says happened. A Butte doctor was sentenced today for sexually assaulting his patients. I'll tell you how much time he got. It's 6.31 here on your Thursday morning. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Elwell has our forecast here in just a moment. Our top story for you now. The House Judiciary Committee hopes to have Special Counsel Robert Mueller testifi to testify two weeks from now on May 15th. One person they may not hear from is his attorney, General William Barr. Yeah, he is expected to buck a scheduled appearance today. Could be held in contempt of Congress because of it. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest this morning from New York. Attorney General William Barr says he will not come before the House Judiciary Committee today, one day after he was grilled by senators on the Mueller report. He is trying to blackmail the committee. Chairman Jerry Nadler wanted lawmakers and staff attorneys from both parties to be able to question Barr. He refused. Given how dishonest he has been, uh, I can understand why he, why he is afraid of facing uh, uh, more effective uh, examination. President Trump defended his attorney general's decision. Well, I guess they want to treat him differently than they have anybody else. You elect people, they're supposed to be able to do their own talking. Except you got, yes. Barr did spend five hours in front of a contentious Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday. Please, Mr. Attorney General, you know, give us some credit for knowing what the hell is going on around here. He explained why he did not charge President Trump with obstruction of justice. Special Counsel Robert Mueller laid out 10 possible instances, including one where the president ordered then White House Counsel Don McGahn to have Mueller fired. There's something very different between firing a special counsel outright, which suggests ending the investigation, and having a special counsel removed for conflict, which suggests that you're going to have another special counsel. Republicans came to Barr's defense. He couldn't decide about obstruction. You did. Is that correct? That's right. You feel good about your decision? Absolutely. At least 10 Democratic presidential candidates are calling on Barr to resign. Laura Podesta, CBS News. A few Democrat, at least a few Democrats have suggested if Barr doesn't step down, he could be impeached. Interesting. A lot to follow. It never ends. It never That's ends. It, it, it never ends. ends. It, there, Neither does place. weather, which yeah. is a great thing because <laughs> it keeps it, life it, on the planet going along. You've got to enjoy employed, it. Yes. Yeah, enjoy the weather today because it's all that we've got. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, temperatures this morning into the 30s. Uh, it is a little on the cool side. I do expect the afternoon to be a touch on the breezy side as well. There are a few isolated shower chances. I don't think it's a uh, washout by any stretch, so don't cancel your practices today because of it. But the showers are in play. We do have warmer temperatures temperatures as well. We'll of course talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you for that, Matt. Coming up on 634, westbound I-90 had to be shut down yesterday late in the afternoon. Yeah, it happened after a pedestrian was hit by a semi-truck near the Belgrade exit. MTN's Cody Boyer was on the scene and has our report. If you look behind me, the Gallatin County Sheriff Corner did arrive on scene and they are looking into exactly what happened. When I first arrived here, a Central Valley firefighter came up to me and warned that they indeed had a fatality. Now, Montana Highway Patrol, they cannot confirm that at this time. They say Sergeant Amundsen did speak with me. He did tell me that they did have a man in the roadway. They were not sure if he was walking across or what the circumstances were, but he did confirm that a tractor trailer hit him. We have a serious injury accident. It was a motor vehicle versus pedestrian. Sergeant Amundsen says that forced the entire westbound lane of I-90 near exit 299 to be rerouted. We shut down the road while we're, while we're doing medical treatment, you know, for serious medical treatment. We got the evening rush hour coming on at the, the 4 to 5 o'clock hour here in the Bozeman Belgrade area. We need to investigate the crash. We got a number of investigators out here. While details are still unknown, investigators say one thing is clear. It's against the law to be to walk on the roadway on the interstate, so terribly hazardous to be out on the roadway. We are still working on learning more details as they are investigating this case, but for now, we do know that there was at least a man in the road 
He was hit by a tractor trailer and the Montana Highway Patrol alongside the Gallatin County Sheriff's Department is investigating. In Belgrade, Cody Boyer, MTN News. In other news, a Lewis and Clark County judge ruled the suspect in a murder of a Broadwater County deputy, Mason Moore, may be forcibly medicated. Now, in June of last year, Lloyd Barris was found unfit to stand trial. Doctors said he suffered from a number of mental health disorders. Authorities accuse Lloyd Barris's son, Marshall, of fatally shooting Deputy Moore during a pursuit. It happened near Three Forks back on May 16th of 2017. Lloyd and Marshall Barris then fled law enforcement on a chase that ended near Missoula. Marshall died in a shootout with law enforcement. Barris has been charged with five felonies and faces life in prison without parole. And an Idaho woman traveling through Bozeman is now behind bars after police pulled her over and found meth making tools and fake money. Jennifer Lynn Adam appeared in Gallatin County Justice Court facing a charge of possession of dangerous drugs. Adams told officers that she was going home to Idaho from North Dakota and just passing through when officers saw a butane torch inside her car. They also found around $750 of fake $50 bills. Adam had an outstanding nationwide warrant for her arrest. Her bail was set at $50,000. Uh, in other court news, the Butte doctor who pleaded guilty to felony sexual assault in January for inappropriately touching his patients was sentenced to prison yesterday. MTN's John Amy was in the courtroom for the hearing of Patrick McGree and has our details. Butte physician Dr. Patrick McGree was sentenced Wednesday in Butte District Court to 20 years in the Montana State Prison with 10 years suspended from that sentence for sexually assaulting at least six female patients at his Butte practice. Prosecutors recommended a lighter sentence for the doctor, noting that he took full responsibility for his actions. Dr. McGree's attorney noted that his client personally went out and sought counseling for his behavior and that he is very remorseful for his actions. But he has been from day one, including when the investigators came to see him, he has been working to amend um, with a sincere desire and arising from his love of God. In his address to the court, Dr. McGree apologized to the victims and took full responsibility for his actions. I took advantage of you using my position as your physician. I groomed you, I set you up over time, and I misused you sexually. While the judge acknowledged that Dr. McGree was contrite, she noted that his criminal behavior went on for a long time. This was not a one-time incident. It was not one victim. It was not over five years. It was over many years. Some of the doctor's victims also testified in court about the trauma they've experienced since his crimes. I will not go into a doctor's office without somebody with me, the door open. Um, I still don't get out in the public like I used to. Some of the doctor's family members spoke about the doctor's remorse and also his long history of service to the community. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now, McCree, who also lost his license to practice medicine, was also fined $5,000. Uh, in other Treasure State headlines, Billings Police have a 73-year-old man in custody in connection with three attempts to grab children. The man grabbed a four-year-old's hand and tried to walk away on Tuesday, but an older sibling intervened. The next day, the man approached a five-year-old at a park and asked the child to go jog with him. That child refused. The man grabbed another child in the same park and tried to walk away. The child's mother stopped him. The man told her he thought it was a grandchild. Investigators aren't sure if the man has criminal intent or is suffering from some type of mental illness. Scary. And customers of Northwestern Energy are being targeted by a new phone scam that's going around. When you answer your phone, a recording tells you to call a 1-800 number to avoid having your utilities shut off. Customers all over the state are getting these calls. And just so you know, Northwestern never calls its customers to demand immediate payment of past due bills with a prepaid debit card. Now, if you get one of these calls, hang up the phone. 